Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation Tech Feed Edition is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Hey, is CK's $1,500 4K Ultra HD TV a major bargain, or is it, is it something you should avoid? Also, Sony's 4K player, it has a big problem. We're going to tell you all about it. And Iron Man 3 is coming to the theaters. We've got a list of Blu-rays so you can do your homework. And surround sound, just how small can it go? Oh, my goodness. Interesting news week this week. There's some smaller stuff we just have to skip over because we have to go straight to the Sony just loves to do things to piss us off department <laughs> to talk about 4K. Hey, Sony's upcoming streaming 4K player, well, apparently it only works with Sony's 4K TVs, as the good folks at HD Guru confirmed with a Sony spokesperson. Now, I understand that Sony is wanting to carefully control their fledgling 4K ecosystem, but I am hoping one of the first updates for the Sony FMP X1 ultra high def media player removes that limitation and allows it to work with any 4K display out there with the appropriate HDMI interface. That's I'm just trying it. not to say anything rude. It's not even out yet. And here we have something to really ding it. Hopefully, one of the first 4K streaming products available will work with everything eventually. But the word is, no, not out, not out of the gate at least. And this is part of the problem, you know, in the 21st century, it basically it's all about not just the platform and the hardware, but the rights to the content and Sony being jerks. Yeah. Speaking of HD Guru, they just tweeted out something for the I think it's officially safe to buy a 2013 HDTV department. At HD Guru, 2013 HDTV prices dropped since the winter introduction of 2013 HDTVs. High prices have held until now. Click on the link and you're going to get a list of falling prices, ladies and gentlemen. HD Guru says this week we see the first price drops on select Samsung, Panasonic, and LG models, aided by instant rebates and bundle offers. And if you want to find out what the incredible list of HDTVs that are dropping in price, go to hdguru.com. we got a link in the show notes. Uh, we got to show people some love for the traffic. Totally. The Good information right yeah. there. Hey, LG is getting ready to ship the world's first 55-inch curved OLED. That's organic LED technology. And Gadget says, quote, like an IMAX theater screen, the edges are curved toward the viewer to provide more, a more immersive feeling. 4.3 millimeters thin, built out of carbon fiber, so it's easy to get out of the box at a mere 38-ish pounds. Uh, Pre-order started this week, LG told Engadget, and the price will be 15 million Korean won, or about 13,500 for us here in the U.S. A healthy bump over the standard version's 10K MSRP. So don't expect it to appear in the U.S. anytime soon, and if it does, you'll be paying premium prices for that curved OLED screen. I'm not entirely sure I buy the idea that I'm going to be all immersed in my movies because there's a little bit of wraparound in either corner. That, it sounds like they're aiming at more of a very restricted viewing angle, so that maybe, maybe that is the TV for a one-person viewing environment. But otherwise, yeah, I agree with you. I'd want something a little bit bigger than that for a curved screen technology. So it's the ultimate OLED 1080p gaming monitor? Ooh, I like that thought. I that, that. that I, want, I will be willing to test that out for you as oh, soon as possible. Boy. <laughs> Let's talk about what we're watching. Iron Man 3 hits the theaters Friday, so we're queuing up our list of favorite Iron Man Blu-rays. 2008, it's kind of funny, I'm, I'm trying to launch Iron Man 3. Play! And I feel like the website's getting hit, kids. Hey, oh, everyone. wait, is it going to come back this time? Apparently, they're getting stomped over there at the website for Iron Man 3. Oh, there it is. There's Tony Stark in all his glory, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta say, obviously, we gotta start with 2008's Iron Man, which, at least for me, made comic book movies matter again. Not something I expected from John Favreau, the creator of Elf. It's smart, it's funny, it doesn't pretend his audience is stupid, and the action is epic. Mr. Favreau, I apologize for ever doubting you. By the way, obviously, Robert Downey's Jr. portrayal of hard partying genius playboy, amoral arms dealer, General D Bag, Tony Stark, <laughs> rocketed him into eight. It, it, it just. I, it was crazy to watch. As somebody who's watched uh, Robert Downey Jr. act for a long time, it was, and, and as somebody who's been sober for 23 years, it was awesome watching him make a recovery, and it was awesome watching what he did with this character. Totally, and, and that maybe that half a billion dollars Iron Man made worldwide is really what put Downey down in the LA A list. Nah, it was the acting. <laughs> uh, you know, I agree. Point taken, the 48K 24 hertz Dolby True HD 5.1 surround mix is awesome, especially in the action scenes. The video looks solid, though a lot of reviewers have noted that the movie doesn't start to get really gorgeous until we meet the Iron Man Mark II. Favreau used a couple different cameras during the film, and there's a grittier feel with more film grain early on. Great flick, really, really fun. Can't wait till the wee ones get large enough, old enough, mature enough, mature enough yeah. to enjoy it. Sweet. Hey, now, if you really want to show off your home theater, 
Get your hands on 2012's The Avengers on Blu-ray. Joss Whedon of Firefly and Buffy fame gets his action movie on with Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye, and probably the most enjoyable Hulk in years. Now, if you like action movies, you should own this on Blu-ray. Stunning 1.78 to 1 MPEG-4 AVC encode. This movie looks amazing on a big screen TV. And as High Def Digest noted in its review, quote, black levels are inky, not a hint of crush, while shadow detail remains impressive. Watch the Iron Man Thor forest fight and you'll see every pine needle, scrap of bark and tree, and skin tones are natural. That's what I like to hear in a quote. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a, a marquee, a benchmark, a reference level film. Uh, especially if, if, you, if you're the kind of person that went out of their way to buy a projector or an HDTV that's really delivering on the blacks and the detail in the dark areas, this is a, this is a Blu-ray to test it out with. And let us not speak of our phones here. <laughs> hey, if you're thinking, hey, I don't want to buy the disc or get off the couch and go to Redbox, consider Patrick's favorite tool for finding movies and TV shows online. Can I stream it? This is, if you've never seen Can I Stream It, it's uh, canistream.it or canistream.com. Ah. So resolve that. I type in Iron Man, I hit enter, and it's going to do a really fast search. Pretty Just sweet. that fast. So because first the advertising for Iron Man 3, the Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, and right about now... Oh, let's go to the Iron Man 2008 and hit availability. There we go. And it's going to tell you about streaming, digital rentals, digital purchases, and DVD and Blu-ray. So check this out, right? So the quick search tells me I got it on Amazon, Apple, Vudu, Sony's network. I can buy a copy of it on all the other networks. I can get the DVD and Blu-ray from Amazon or Netflix. With pricing info. Yeah, and it's cool because if I you... I dig that. Let's say you're a Crackle person or a Hulu person. You can actually sign up and get notices for when it's actually available on your particular platform. Now, Robert Heron, you recently watched Casablanca. Epic flick, everyone um, should watch that. Yeah. Unbelievable Blu-ray transfer. Old movies can look amazing on Blu-ray. So if I type in Casablanca on canistreamit.com, you get a very different result from, uh, from uh, Iron Man. So Casablanca 1942, we do have digital rentals, but no free streaming, and of course, lots of digital purchase options. It's kind of fun to be able to see what's out there and where it's available. That is, ooh, here's something we're gonna see like no results on. Marx Brothers, A Night in Casablanca. Oh, it's on Netflix. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go watch Marx Brothers on Netflix. Yes. Too funny. Okay. Hey, romance isn't dead. It's basically, it's dancing in our picks from the new Blu-ray releases for April 30th, 2013, which include Silver Linings Playbook, a great David O. Russell script meets Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley Cooper. 1968's Funny Girl, Glee fans take notice. The classic for Barbra Streisand fans has received a 4K restoration. Blu-ray.com says that the video looks great. Quote, if a bit soft on the whole, though the soundtrack is less impressive. And Strictly Ballroom doesn't have the best transfer, but Patrick loves Baz Thurman's work, so we'll leave it in. Yeah, I love Baz Luhrmann's work. And of course, he just came out with Gatsby, which is, oh, I just wish, you know. What do you think of the remake coming out for that? It, I will, I will wait till I see it. There, I, one of the I most, don't know what to think. The original, the last Gatsby, which was like 1974 with Robert Redford, it's like sleeping pills. Uh, and I'm a Robert Redford fan. Do and I need to read the book first? Wait, you ever read Cat? Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we gotta, yes. I'm, okay, I'm getting you a present on Amazon. Uh, I'm going back to Amazon. Don't forget this week, Star Trek Three: The Next Generation, uh, Season 3, along with a dog pile of Star Trek bargains on Blu-ray oh. in honor of, duh, another Star Trek movie coming out this summer. I like the idea that new movie, bargain prices on Blu-rays. I am always looking for <laughs> the $10 bargain bin for Blu-rays, or less, if I can find them, because there's always one or two movies in there I want, and that price is just about perfect. Ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Get your bargain on. <laughs> Speaking of bargains, we've replaced the fine HGTV we normally have in our set with this, ladies and gentlemen, the, the Se ah. Seiki, Seiki SE 50UY04 4K Ultra HD <laughs> HGTV. Oh my goodness. So you bought it. I did. It's on set. It is. $1,500 for a 4K HD TV. This is a big deal. 1500 MSRP. We're seeing it street on Groupon deals for as little as 1200 bucks. Uh, 120 hertz LCD, 3840 by 2160, aka 2160p. When the rest of the world selling 4K televisions wants you to drop at least 4500 to six grand to 25000 or more. This shows you that 4K is literally, it's coming to be a checkbox option for all the new generation of HD TVs like right. 3D used to be. This is the new feature item that you're going to be finding in the premium models out there. But this is at a price point which I, I consider to be a, a value at that. And like most HD TVs out there, it incorporates a digital tuner for over-the-air reception that gives it the HD TV moniker. Also, three D HDMI ports, one component video input, as well as USB for basic JPEG and MP3 support as well. It's interesting. Seiki's deal is like 
you know, everyone deserves a well-made TV. And basically, they're like, we don't want to build an operating system into it. We don't want it to play back Netflix. We just want to give you a screen and some HDMI ports and let you put what you want totally. on that screen. Their, their, their business model shows that they don't offer TVs with things like app support and other right. things like that. Basic display technology, but giving it to you at a good price. Kind of reminds me of where Vizio was at the very, very early days of their TV production. But it comes down to content, 4K content. And at this point, we're really looking at things like <laughs> clips of beautiful bees, no doubt, in 4K. But again, these are clips. Mm -hmm. Also, upscaled content as well, be it you know, what we're looking at here or content from a personal computer. Video yeah. games. Video games. You can run them at full 4K resolution with one HDMI cable into this panel. Some limitations to be aware of, though. So running them at like 128 hertz at 1080p, great gaming experience. This was one of the odd things we came into. Now, for 4K resolution support on this TV, you're limited to only 30 hertz. That's the spec currently for HDMI. Yeah. That, that's really more of the HDMI spec, I think, than the panel itself, although the timing mechanisms in the panel could be affecting that right. as well. However, that's okay for things like video. Most of our Blu-ray movies are in 24 hertz, or, or that movie frame rate that we're all familiar with. This will work just fine on that. And because it's a 120 hertz panel, we're talking a four or five X multiplier to take that 24 or 30 hertz content and present it at 120 hertz. The problem we ran into really was with overscan at 720p and 1080p resolutions at 60 hertz, your standard 1080p and 720p formats. We were getting about 2% overscan and the basically that's, that's decimating the picture a little bit. You're losing detail. Right. However, at any other refresh rate, like when we were using the computer, like at 100 hertz, or 120 hertz at 1080p, no overscan at all. Yeah, we, we basically, we've got to call out uh, uh, Seiki's uh, tech support to get some more information on this. I wouldn't be surprised if a firmware patch can fix this. Um, really big question, 4K gaming, 4K, the, the biggest content, if, if, thanks to Sony uh, locking down their, 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 their 4K player, the biggest potential source of 4K content is video games. 4K totally. video gaming at 30 hertz. Yeah. Th that actually is almost unusable. Right. Uh, that, is, that is about half of where you want to be in most gaming scenarios right. in terms of how fast the screen's being updated with new information. 30 hertz is too slow for gaming, good enough for video. And, and if you can run this at 1080p though, we're seeing that you can move that frame rate or that refresh rate of right. the panel up to 120 hertz, which I have never seen any LCD running at 1080p 120 before. That was kind of a new experience for me. We actually did load up one of the latest games, Bioshock Infinite, and tried mm -hmm. it at that, at that refresh rate, and it actually seemed to be, it was definitely faster than the 60 hertz. I can't, I can't confirm that it was exactly right. 120 hertz that we were looking at, but the performance was there. And I, I see that as maybe an inroad for somebody looking for a high performance panel for large format PC gaming, perhaps. It's interesting. It's also a major challenge on the GPU for gaming at 4K. Our friends Without over at PCPro.com, Ryan Shrout, also bought one of the first of these monitors to hit the street. He's been running benchmarks, and to get f basically top-of-the-line performance at 4K resolutions, you're looking at spending like $1,000 on your GPU. It's going to be interesting. Totally. But that 120 hertz mode at 1080p, though, a lot of cards could run that today, and that's mm -hmm. something I'm really looking forward to seeing more and testing more of that out. Really, but who is this TV for? It's for the people, I think, that are early 4K adopters out there. People wanting a good value on that. This is an eight megapixel screen. Uh, you could put an eight megapixel image on it. Anyone who wants to sit really close to the screen will need this kind of extra resolution. However, right. uh, they've mentioned that there's gonna be a 65 and a 39 inch model coming out later this year. That 39 inch model at 4K resolution. That's my desk desktop model. That's what I'm thinking. That would be a great choice for desktop. Because I would use this at 120 hertz if my desk was a little deeper. Totally. <laughs> and I will just give credit too for the company. The, the movie mode built into this mm -hmm. TV has a very good calibration. They actually did some work on it and to show that it's grayscale performance actually from the darkest grays to the brightest grays tracked pretty well. You could tell that they did some work at the factory before they shipped and I like to see that. However, if you're looking for things like extra picture controls in terms of being able to adjust white balance or affecting that overscan in a proper way, that was a little tough. The, you had to dig into the service right. menus and the controls in the service menus didn't always do what you think they did. And it's really easy to mess up a TV in there. So if you find that information about this TV, how to get into that service menu, be very careful about messing around in there. You can, you can undo what the factory did right. and you'll be left yourself to try to fix it. That would be bad. No. One last question before we Shoot. move on. What is, what, when are we going to get 60 or 120 hertz or a higher refresh rate at 4K? What's, what's technically required for that at this point? We need a new HDMI spec, actually, and they are working on that right now. They're going to take, take 2160p 
260 hertz and beyond with the next HDMI spec that's coming out hopefully later this year. They talked about it at CES back in January. We've yet to see any product yet support anything beyond 4K30. So do we expect any product that's 4K30 to run at 4K60 or higher in the future? Like a firmware or anything I like that? I doubt it. Think about that before you start dropping big checks. Yeah. I need to make a correction to last week's show. Vimeo cannot do 4K video. Gorgeous 1080p video, but not 4K no matter what the search engine at Vimeo.com says. Uh, we also suspect YouTube is downscaling to 2K. We'll let you know what we find out. But it's interesting. I thought the video was available in 4K. Turns out, if you, if you dig in and you contact their press people, uh, Vimeo supports 1080p HD, uh, but it's downscaled to 720p by default. So when you go to original, you don't get the 4K it was shot in. You get something along the lines of <laughs> 1080p. Ooh. So heads up on that one. Holy cow. Rob W, a.k.a. you know dot 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 tweets at HD Nation. How are today's 4K TVs going to be impacted by the upcoming changes to the HDMI spec? That really, I don't think the current 4K TVs will be able to be upgraded. Plain and simple. I don't think you're going to be able to say, you know what, we're going to we're going to massage that HDMI port and make it somehow support twice the bandwidth if the internal chipset doesn't already support it. Right. So, or more or, or bandwidth, depending on how much how much how fast you want to run that panel. If you're the kind of person that can afford to buy a new HDTV next year to work with, say, some new generation of 60 hertz uh, movie players or something, go for it. If you're going to be really frustrated in a year because you spent all of your money on a 30 k a 30 hertz monitor that's going to feel slow compared to the next generation of monitors. Well, you might want to wait before you buy. Yep, and, and for video playback, again, 30 hertz is enough. Uh, mm -hmm. It should be fine for looking at what we want to look at. Right. But in terms of being a desktop display, even that usage might be good. It's really when it comes down to gaming. That's the big one where the refresh rate's just not there. Even for console gaming, I'm not even going to say that's worth doing. And with the overscan issues we ran into, I'm, I'm going off track. But... <laughs> That's another reason to really sit back and yeah. think about what you're going to spend on terms of 4K technology. If you have nothing else to connect to this, don't go out and buy a 4K TV without, without something to connect to it that think will give you that twice, resolution. twice, buy once, totally. unless you have a lot of money. We got a, a bunch of posts on YouTube. Thanks to everybody who, uh, who got down in the comments section there. David M says, when researching new HDTVs, I found out about this hidden problem with TVs that affect gamers only, the game lag from input to the TV's output. Can you guys cover this topic? I was put off from the newer Samsung TVs because of this lag. I have a cool tool to show you guys that will actually show you how much delay there is from when the video enters that port on the back of the TV to the point it comes on the screen. And it will show you there is definitely a delay between point A and point B, and that can affect your gaming. We'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> In, in detail and soon. <laughs> soon we will get on that. Speaking of soon, Steve O writes, can you do a segment showcasing any practical uses of the HDMI CEC and or the HDMI Ethernet channel? I know that these features exist. What are some of the ways that CE manufacturers are using them? Thanks. Love the show. Great question. We're on it. Totally. Yeah. It's we're, we're ramping up sort of the pipeline for products to come in. Uh, and believe me, these are all great questions. And we will start doing, uh, well, yeah, it's it's. We'll save it for the second. There's a ton of stuff coming up, folks. Yeah. You want to read this one? I will. Hey, <laughs> Carrie's check, or Carrie's check. Carrie's check. Carrie Sheck. Carrie Sheck says, quote, it's important to note that while digital cables either work or they don't work, analog cables, both the interconnect and speaker, make a huge difference providing the connected equipment is capable of resolving the difference. I'm not going to call sheep stuff on that, <laughs> but I'll say that some people spend way too much on speaker cables. We'll talk Ooh. more about it next week. We actually had a great question where it's like, do I need to spend more money on speaker cables to get all of the sound? And Oh, my. Yeah. You're opening up a can of worms right there. A giant can of worms. And finally, Tokamana commented, Brilliant episode. I really appreciated this video, especially finding out that most HDMI cables are all similar. Thank God I didn't buy that $160 HDMI cable the other day. Yes! <laughs> that pretty much makes our day. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're here for, people. Email HDNation at revision3.com. Please follow us on Twitter at HDNation. And if you get a minute, please comment down there on the YouTubes. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.